fight to get out there and be in the city. Yeah. Um, so what made both of you want to be, to get involved with this project? Um, well, the, the project was presented to us. Um, it was presented to me. Um, D Smith was like, um, I love watching you. I love what you do. Um, I love your personality. Um, I was already doing trans activism and things yeah. like that. And she was like, I would like for you to be a part of this project, this documentary that I have. So um, she explained to me a little bit what it was going to be about. Um, she said that it would help out other transgender youth, transgender people in this world. Um, so I was like, I would love to be a part of something like that. Okay. Yeah, she approached me and she said, like, this is going to be epic. It's going to be monumental. It's going to talk to the Black community to speak about, you know, the struggles that we have as Black trans women. And she kind of like, she didn't we didn't really know about the sex worker part until like a little bit later yeah. but I thought it was just like about the struggles that we experience as black trans women and it was just to you know right. like a love letter to the community to right. to put uh you know a face to the suffering that we've endured as black trans women exactly right. can both of you talk about working with D? um D is She's very chill. She's yeah. very mellow. She has a personality that, you know, you just become comfortable with her. So that made the experience overall just um, just not so stressing or feeling like we have to overwork ourselves. Like she just told us to just be ourselves and be authentic. So for me, that made the experience a more comforting one. Okay. Yeah, she her passion for the film and her name that she came with and what she represented as being like the first Black trans woman to transition on a national reality show, mm -hmm. um, like gave me like incentive to feel comfortable, as Leah said, to know that our story wasn't going to get misconstrued or will be delivered how we wanted it to be delivered coming from a by a, from us by us you know by a black trans woman so it was refreshing to know that she had so much passion to give us a platform and a voice and let us talk about issues that we've been dealing with our whole lives and it was a great experience mm -hmm. had either of you seen the film before sundance Personally, I did not. Okay. Um, but when I when I did see it, I was amazed. I actually cried yeah. um a little bit towards the ending because it was just like wow, like to just see myself up there on the screen and everybody's laughing, everybody's giving a good response, everybody's drawn in and looking at the screen. It's like you don't even want to look away for one moment. Like it was just drawing you in. So um, just just that intensity of how great the film was, it made me want to watch it again, honestly. Yeah, she kept it under wraps and she wanted us to experience it when she was there so she can see our reactions. And I was dying to see it even yeah to get a taste of what I was walking myself into because yeah. I'm that person but I didn't get to see it till Sundance what's it been like and, and congratulations on the the rapturous success at Sundance but what's it been like festigate navigating the festival circuit circuit this year and going around to various festivals and enjoying the success of this film leading up to the release it's been a really surreal experience to have like your story be celebrated and and how the audience will give you a round of applause and mm -hmm. laugh and you know and after the film like come and want to take pictures with us mm -hmm. as you know black trans women were not really celebrated so much in media in a positive light so it's very refreshing and uplifting and a positive experience. And it makes me feel like, you know, we did the right thing by sharing our stories and being vulnerable and taking a part of this project. Okay. I would definitely, I would definitely agree. Um, it's it's nice. It was refreshing 
having people coming up to you that you don't know, just saying, hey, like, I really love what you're a part of. I really love what you did for the community. I enjoyed it. You did great. You know, I wanted to take pictures. I signed, like, my first autograph Mm -hmm. and, like, this little book with the little, uh, it was like a scrapbook with the Kokomo City thing, and I just did a little signature. And that little moment, just that little special moment, you know, was really big to me. Um, just the gratification that we were getting yeah. um, at, and seeing everybody's reactions and laughing in the crowd and at the funny parts. And I enjoyed the whole experience. That's great. Hollywood traditionally has not been great at authenticity mm-hmm. in, in terms of trans representation. When, right. when, did, um, when did both of you see someone in media like television or film that you that you could identify with for the first time? Mm, I would have to say probably Paris is Burning. Okay. Just seeing actual trans people like unedited, raw, uncut, just seeing them living their everyday normal lives um, and maneuvering through society and really showing the struggle of what it was like being trans back in that time in the 80s and 90s. Um, I think that that, that that was the first real, you know, show, not, not drag queens, mm-hmm. not people that are just part-time, but actual people, trans people that are like medically, yeah. surgically transitioning. Exactly. I would have to say Paris is Burning and okay. then Laverne Cox. Yeah. Because I know her oh, yeah. from here in New York and I've seen her mm-hmm. through her whole transition and to see her mm-hmm. work hard at her dreams and goals and to see where she's at now. That was like the first representation of a success story mm-hmm. in Hollywood, you know, and some, some uh, motivation that it is possible to be who you are and still be celebrated and and put on mainstream TV shows and award shows and everything. I think that was my first example, like a positive example. Okay. When I was talking to Dee last week, um, we, were both, we were both talking about the irony, the irony and the fact that this is such a, a joyous, positive film full of just such great characters, undercut a little bit by the fact that, you know, Rashida was murdered. Laya, can, can you talk about you know, living here in Atlanta and and how you feel and what cities like Atlanta can do to be more protective of our community? Um, Well, for one, around the time the movie was was first filmed, the documentary was first filmed, that's when the transgender murders, murders were going crazy. Like, I remember that year, it was like at least 30 or 40. Um, And so it it kind of it kind of you know each year it gradually went down a little bit more and more but this year um when Coco unfortunately passed um it kind of shook all the sex worker girls in Atlanta yeah. it kind of made it it brought back this unsafety feeling yeah. um for the girls that are working here um involved in sex work um. I would say the gun laws definitely need to be a little bit more prohibited because now they're basically allowing anybody to walk around without a gun license. Exactly. And I think that that's also one of the main issues or part of the problem because there's so many people that have access to guns here. Mm-hmm. And then they're calling up these girls and going over to their house and they're bringing them over there. Yeah. Okay, this is my final question for both of you. Why is, I mean, can you talk about the importance of this film and why it's important to get it out there and be seen? Um, I feel like this, this, um, this starts topics and discussions that are taboo, mm-hmm. that people don't really want to talk about or discuss or keep it in the dark of a secret. Um, this encourages trans youth this um encourages down low men you know of all ethnicities and all you know business that are businessmen that are nine to five workers you know everyday men that are struggling with 
trying to find who they are or date transgender women openly. Um, so I feel like this film is also for them. I feel like this is needed to cause progression within the trans community to show us in a more positive light um, or just as humans and everyday people. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think it like destigmatizes a little bit sex work. It puts a personifies the trans experience, trans joy, struggles, the dichotomy between our families and this community. Mm -hmm. It helps us, you know, educate a little bit and you know, show a little dark side of, of what we have to go through, but in a positive, beautiful, artistic way. And as Leah said, it will start conversations that were way behind you that we need to start and, and maybe educate people to protect Black trans women because we are a marginalized community that's been under attack lately for a lot. And I think that that's what I would like for that to happen. And also the DL conversation, the trans amorous men to be able to come out and have a, an example, a positive example to love us and take care of us, et cetera. Okay. And I would, I would also like to add in, this is for the girls whose stories who don't get a chance to get told. Okay. Um, Cause there's a plenty of them out there and there's plenty of trans black trans women of color that are still escorting doing sex work currently in this day and time. So this is also for them to have something to look at and to, and have hope in their life that things can get better for them and that they can see people that look like them on the TV screen as well. Okay. Thank you both for, for taking time to talk to me today. And thank you both for making this film. And I'm so glad that it's getting out there and, and having mm -hmm. such tremendous success. So thank you both. Um, thank you. No problem. Thanks, Thanks so much. Have a nice day. Thanks a lot.